In the last video, I raised a topic for discussion. I want to thank you guys for the comments that you left. There were some really thoughtful things that were said, and I thought it was a really interesting discussion. If for some reason you haven't seen that video, basically, I brought up this topic of where is the balance between the technological side of what we do as photographers versus the creative side. And so, in other words, there has to be some kind of baseline of technology involved in order just to do what we do, whether that is analog or whether it's digital. But at what point is that piece in place, and at what point creative creatively do we need to take over in order to make work of any kind of significance. Anyway, it was a really interesting discussion. I'm really excited because this morning I just finished recording a podcast about that same topic. My friend Jaron Schneider and I have this podcast that we do, and so basically we spun this into an hour-long conversation. We took the original topic and some of the contributions from people in the comments and uh, stretched it out and really dug into it. And Jaron had some really interesting things to say as well. So check that out. It's going to come out on Sunday, but I will put a pinned comment or link it in the show description anyway. I highly recommend it. But having said that, I also got comments about the change of scenery. And basically, I'm kind of cleaning and overhauling some things in my office right now. So welcome to my living room once again. We're going to open some mail. Let's get going. This first one is from Wine Country Camera. You guys remember my friend Rod who makes the filter systems? I think I know what this is. So this is the brand new Wine Country 150 system and I probably should explain what this is and how it works. Okay, this is the Wine Country filter system and I've shown this on the show many times before. Rod is a really good friend of mine, Rod Clark, he makes these. Anyway, this is really awesome. I use it for landscape photography. Essentially, it's kind of this matte box inspired filter holder that attaches to the lens and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But basically what it does is it allows you to stack filters in here. It has a workflow in place. So I can use something like a gradient filter on the front. This is a neutral density filter. I just threw these in here for the sake of our demonstration. And this is kind of worth the price of the whole admission here because it is a circular polarizer that you can turn with this little screw on the back side. It's very cool. So the way this whole camera system mounts on here is like this. You've got this pin that attaches the filter holder to what's essentially a gigantic step-up ring. The step-up ring attaches to the lens with the filter threading, and essentially you just need a bunch of these, and they all use the same filter system. So this is the part that will adapt to various lenses that you might have. This works well for most lenses, with some exceptions. For example, this is an ultra wide lens. This is Sony's 12 to 24 millimeter. And if you look real closely, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, there is no filter threading and the front element of the lens sticks out a little bit too. And this is kind of normal with ultra wide lenses. So like on the Sony 12 to 24, also the Nikon 14 to 24, and then also like some of the Nikon perspective shift or tilt shift lenses, they don't have filter threading and they have enormous front elements on the lens. So this is a system that will not attach to these lenses until now. Allow me to show you. So we're going to take the 150 mount, which will slip over the lens, and it has this little collar that you can tighten, which will hold it in place. That is not only going to work, but we also still have access to the zoom and focus rings on the lens. Very cool. And whoa, mama. Woo. Just to give you a point of reference here, this is the standard holder, and this is the 150. So we still have the awesome circular polarizer and this little dial to turn it. Boom. This works like the other filter too. You line this up with the notch so you can get it in and out quite easily. Now we have neutral density filter. And let's say we want to drop a gradient filter in there too. And this works exactly like the other holder. You've got this lock switch here so this doesn't fly out on you. And you simply drop that and you adjust this to where you want it to be. And then you have your little filter set up. That is cool. Rod told me a little bit about this holder and what's really interesting about it because you don't have access to filter threading on some of these super wide angle lenses that every one of them is going to be slightly different in size. And so this is actually made on an industrial 3D printer and it's glass filled nylon is the material they use on this. And what's really significant about that is that they can actually kind of come up with new models of this to fit various lenses and they can get them into production in like three weeks. So that's pretty amazing. 
amazing. But this is something that is major missing with any kind of filter system. And as I mentioned, there are some other ones that are made out there that you can get. What I like about rods is that it's very simple. It's the only filter system that comes with a workflow and everything fits in here real smoothly. I've shown you this before and there's not a lot of cramming and stuffing to get things out. And if for some reason you need to refocus or recompose and you've got ND filters on here and you can't see, you just simply lift them up and you have access to the camera as is. And it is a wonderful system. I will link this up in the show description. Rod, thanks for seeing this. I actually have a trip coming up the first week of February, I'm going to go to Marfa, Texas, and I'm headed out there with my friend Eric Rossi, who many of you might remember. We're just going on a vacation, and we're going to go visit Donald Judd's place and look at art and have a good time, and we'll probably vlog. And so I'm going to bring this along and do some test images while I'm out there, and I'll give you guys a full review as it unfolds. So, Rod, thanks for the filters. This is awesome. Check out Wine Country Camera, and there's a 15% off discount code for art of photography viewers since Rod knows me. So link is in the description. So first up is this book called Early Days in the Adirondacks, the photographs of Seneca Ray Stoddard. And this comes from Damien Munoz, who writes, dedicated, scratched out, donated to the art of photography for the advancement of photography. Thank you, Damien. The book is awesome. Next up is a book that comes from Henry, who is in Berlin, who writes, Dear Ted, my name is Henry. I'm a 24-year-old photographer from Switzerland and have been following your YouTube channel for many years. First of all, thanks for your work. Your videos about Saul Leiter, Ansel Adams, or the Artist Series are very inspiring to me. In 2014, I founded an agency with a good friend. We wanted to publish a magazine and give young local photographers a platform for their photography. We called it, and I'm sorry, I am going to completely blow the pronunciation, Ein Hunder Telf. 111. At that time in my photography studies, I dealt with the time of the founding of the magazine Camera Work by Alfred Stieglitz. That was our role model, and since we were exactly 111 years later in 2014, we named the magazine Ein Hunderthof. Well, it took a while, and in the meantime, my good friend works as a graphic designer for a reputed book publisher in Heidelberg, Germany. In 2016, during my studies, I collected all my money and went to New York twice for a total of three weeks. This has always been my dream, and I was walking almost 25 miles a day and overjoyed. The result of this time is now in front of you. It is a declaration of love to this city. I designed the book together with my good friend, and we produced 50 copies. We were at book fairs and have sold about half of them, but unfortunately, the topic was not that good as there were too many people to take pictures in the streets of New York before me. It is a great experience, and we want to continue the idea. I hope you enjoy the book, and I would be very happy about your feedback. Greetings for Berlin, Henry. Henry, the book is fabulous. You're right. Street photography is crowded and is a tough space. But if you guys like this, I will put the link here in the show description. And if you want a copy... I'm sure Henry will hook you up. Thank you, sir. Next up is another book from Berlin. This one comes to us from Oliver Krebs, who writes, Dear Ted, thank you for your interesting vlog. I especially enjoy the artist series. Please find enclosed my latest book, which could interest you. I wish you an enjoyable Advent season and a good time for going through the pages. Oliver, my apologies that it's after Advent, but I'm still enjoying the book. It is fabulous. Thank you, sir. This lighting situation here today is ridiculous. It's like overcast and the clouds are moving, so it's casting shadows and doing weird things. You get it. Next up is You Know Me, and this comes to us from... Hello, Ted. My name is Marie Boyard. I am a photographer and editor from Luxembourg. I would like to thank you for your YouTube channel. I have learned much more in photography than in photography school, and you have reinforced my love for film photography. Today, I shoot with my Hasselblad or a 4x5. There's a magazine I have just launched in order to celebrate beautiful photography. I hope you'll enjoy. Best 
Marie. Apparently I'm having reading and light issues. By the way, this is some amazing handwriting. So you know me is the zine here. It's rather thick. This is a hefty zine and it is a compilation of works from looks like 25 or 26 photographers. This is pretty cool. Marie, thanks for the book. I love it. So I know I say this every time I do mail time, but this is one of my favorite show types to do because I love seeing the work that you guys are doing. It always inspires me to want to go make things. And on that note, and speaking of inspiration and and I'm not really like sharing everything here with you, but hold on. Gotta love these clouds. So this year, I've got some goals in mind for myself as a photographer, not a YouTuber or a filmmaker, just some things that I want to do with image making, like chasing this exposure. Sorry, this is really distracting. But anyway, last year I did a lot of traveling and that was a lot of fun. Most of it was either for the artist series, the stuff that I've got in the can right now that will be coming out in the next couple months, or it was stuff that I was doing for various press trips for Sony and Nikon and people like that, which was a lot of fun. I had an enormous amount of fun doing all that, but there's some shooting and some stuff that I want to do for myself that I'm super excited about. So my friend Eric Rossi, who I have done videos with before. He lives in New York. He's never been to Texas. He's going to come down here and we are going to drive out to West Texas to the town of Marfa, which is a really interesting place. I have never been there, but I want to see the Chinati Foundation and this is where they house the works of Donald Judd and others. And uh, if you're into that kind of thing, minimalism from the 70s, New York era stuff, that is the place for that. And there's other stuff down there too. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm hoping that I can get this camera situation worked out because this is really annoying today. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it here for now. Lots of stuff coming up. We're going out there the first week of February. Check out the podcast if you haven't already. And then of course I make videos all the time. You already knew that you're sitting here watching this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.